In the shadowed forests, neath Gaunt's stern command, the ghosts of Tanith marched, a spectral band. First and only through the galaxy's expanse, in the Emperor's name, they wove their deadly dance. From their lost world, a memory, a sigh. Tanith's sons, under foreign stars they lie. Cloaked in shadows, silent as the grave, for the Imperium, the bravest of the brave. Their last guns whispered death in the darkened night. Their blades flashed quick, a fleeting, lethal light. Through war-torn worlds, their legend fiercely grew. Tanith's phantoms, loyal, steadfast, and true. In the blood and mud, they carved their path in defiance of chaos, the warp's unending wrath. A brotherhood born of battle's fierce embrace, in each soldier's heart, Tanith's undying grace. No world to call home, no land to call their own. Yet undaunted, they fought, their courage widely known. From Vergast's peaks to Herador's hallowed ground, their valor and honor in every campaign found. Through blackest night, through fire and through rain, the first and only Tanith's spectral train. In every heart, their lost world's enduring flame, for each fallen brother, remembered is their name. In the Emperor's light, they stand, ghosts unyielding, across the stars, their fate forever wielding. Tanith's first and only, in history enshrined and in the legend of the guard, their legacy is defined. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed scholars and distinguished guests of the Library Sanctus, today we gather under the hallowed dome of our illustrious institution to delve into the annals of the Imperium's military history, focusing on a story that resonates with heroism, sacrifice and loyalty. I present to you an exploration into the legendary exploits of the Tanith First Regiment, known across the stars as the Tanith First and Only, or more commonly among citizens of the Imperium, Gaunt's Ghosts. Under the command of the charismatic Ibram Gaunt, these scouts, snipers and soldiers, who mastered the art of stealth and survival in their native forests, were transformed into a fighting force that would become legendary. Their tale is one of tragedy and triumph, as the very day of their founding was overshadowed by the annihilation of their homeworld, rendering them the last of their kind. A regiment without a home, bound only to each other and their duty to the Emperor. As we embark on this odyssey, we shall trace the path of the Tanith first through the crucible of war. From their earliest engagements to the harrowing battles that tested their metal and forged their legend, we shall explore the tactics, unbreakable camaraderie and spirit that set the Tanith apart from other regiments in the Astra Militarum. With that, let us begin exploring the storied history of the Tanith First Regiment, the ghosts of their lost world, as we unravel their legendary exploits across the war-torn galaxy. Tanith was a planet enshrouded in deep, verdant forests, a world where the canopy of trees stretched so vast and thick that daylight often struggled to pierce through to the forest floor. The people of Tanith, much like their environment, were hardy and resilient, their lives, entwined with the dense forests, honed them into adept woodsmen and hunters. These skills, born out of necessity and survival, would later become their greatest asset in the service of the Imperium. The culture of Tanith was steeped in tradition, with a strong sense of community binding the people together. They were a people of lore and legend where tales of the forest and the spirits that dwelled within were passed down through generations. However, the tranquility of this forested world was not to last. The call to arms from the Imperium, asking Tanith to raise regiments for the Imperial Guard, was a moment of pride, but also of profound change. It marked Tanith's step from the shadows of their forests into the broader galaxy's tumultuous affairs but tragedy struck swiftly and without mercy. On the eve of their departure to join the Sabbat World's Crusade, a Chaos Splinter Fleet descended upon the defenseless Tanith. In a harrowing decision, Colonel Commissar Gaunt ordered the evacuation of the newly formed regiments 
abandoning Tanith to its fate. The planet was consumed in a maelstrom of fire and destruction. Its forests turned to ash, and its people and culture were lost forever to the ravages of war. As the regiments evacuated, Tanith was consumed by the fires of chaos. A world and its people perished in that conflagration, but a new kind of warrior rose from the ashes. The remnants of the three regiments, now homeless and forged in the loss of their world, were combined into one. The Tanith first and only. The Tanith first were not just a military unit. They were a microcosm of their lost world, a world that lived only through them. The Tanith carried a sense of mourning, a shared grief that bound them together more tightly than any mere camaraderie could. They were united in the remembrance of a home that no longer existed, save in their memories and traditions. Their culture was steeped in the mystique of their forested world. From the way they carried their long, straight knives, known as straight silver, to their unique camo cloaks, woven from the flora of their homeworld, everything about them whispered of the woods they had left behind. Their skin, too, inked with swirling patterns of blue and grey, Every member of the regiment bears these marks to signify their membership in this elite fighting force. The language and dialect of Tanith too lived on in the regiment. Words and phrases in the Tanith tongue were commonly heard in the ranks. Their dialect, known for its soft, sibilant tones, used Proto-Gothic, the early form of both High and Low Gothic used presently in the Imperium as their private language. The Tanith accent is noted to be a melodic sing-song. However, the quiet melody belies their skill in killing the enemies of the Imperium. In battle, the Tanith first were known for their quiet discipline, a stark contrast to the more boisterous and brutish nature of other Imperial Guard regiments. They moved like shadows, their presence often only revealed by the outcomes of their actions. They were the ghosts of the Astra Militarum, striking where the enemy least expected, leaving confusion and fear in their wake. Their earliest campaign, the Sabbat World's Crusade, stands as a significant and bloody campaign waged in the name of reclaiming the lost worlds of the Sabbat World sector from the grip of chaos. Amidst the countless regiments that fought in this crusade, the tale of the Tanith first and only is particularly notable for its valor and achievements under the most harrowing conditions. As the crusade progressed, the ghosts were deployed across various war zones, each presenting its own set of challenges and horrors. At the siege of Vervenhive, one of the most grueling sieges of the crusade, the ghosts played a pivotal role. Their actions in the city of Vervenhive earned them a reputation as masters of urban warfare, able to navigate and control the chaos of city fighting with a finesse rarely seen in the Astra Militarum. The planet of Vergast, an industrial world of vital strategic importance, was torn apart by civil strife and invasion by the forces of chaos. The campaign's crux was the siege of Vervenhive, one of the planet's great hive cities. The Ghost's involvement in the Vergast campaign was pivotal from the outset. Their expertise in reconnaissance and guerrilla tactics made them invaluable in a war where the front lines were blurred amidst the sprawling urban landscape. The Tanith soldiers excelled in the chaotic environs of Vervunhive, moving unseen and striking with precision. The inhabitants of Ferrozoica had succumbed to the malevolent influence of chaos, transforming into a vast horde of cultists. This marked a dramatic escalation in the conflict, as chaos had directly manifested in the sector. The defenders of Vervenhive, vastly outnumbered, mustered half a million soldiers against a chaos force several times their size. Into this maelstrom of warfare, the Imperial Guard dispatched the Tanith first and only, under the leadership of Colonel Commissar Ibram Gaunt. The initial stages of the battle were marked by intense fighting. The Tanith, adept in stealth and reconnaissance, took up crucial defensive positions. Their efforts, combined with those of the Vervenhive scratch companies, held the line against a relentless tide of enemy infantry and armor. But the battle's turning point was a betrayal from within Vervenhive itself. 
High Master Salvador Sonda, corrupted by chaos, disabled the city's protective void shield, laying the city open to ruinous bombardment. Gaunt, in a daring operation, penetrated the Hive's command center, restoring the void shield and saving countless lives. The battle reached its zenith when Gaunt led a strike force directly into the heart of the enemy, destroying the command crawler of the Chaos Warlord, the Heritor Asphodel, and slaying Asphodel in personal combat. The aftermath of the battle brought a massive influx of reinforcements to Vergast, including Astartes and Titan legions, effectively purging the planet of Chaos influence. In recognition of the citizens' bravery and loss, Warmaster Makaroth's act of consolation allowed survivors to join Imperial Guard regiments, a rare honor. Many Vavunhevas, bonded in battle with the Tanith, chose to join their ranks, enriching the regiment with their skills and tenacity. Their other campaigns and battles are no less impressive, fighting across Imperial space. When the Tanith first arrived on Fantine, the situation was dire. The planet, crucial for its production facilities and strategic position, had been under the yoke of chaos forces. The environment of Fantine was hostile, to say the least. The surface of the planet was uninhabitable, shrouded in toxic gases, forcing its cities to be built atop massive pillars, rising like monoliths above the poisonous clouds. The role of the Tanith in the liberation of Fantine was crucial. Due to the nature of warfare on Fantine, traditional armored assaults and large-scale infantry operations were impractical. This is where the unique skills of the Tanith came to the fore. Their unparalleled expertise in stealth and reconnaissance made them an invaluable asset in the complex urban landscape of Fantine's spire cities. The Ghosts undertook a series of covert operations that were instrumental in destabilizing the chaos held in critical locations. They moved through the labyrinthine corridors and service ducts of the spire cities, gathering intelligence, sabotaging enemy installations, and engaging in hit-and-run attacks that left the Chaos forces bewildered and disorganized. One of the most notable engagements during this campaign was the liberation of Sirenholm, a vital city in the Fantine war effort. The Tanith, utilizing their stealth and local knowledge gained from reconnaissance, infiltrated the city. They sowed chaos within the Chaos ranks, cutting off communications, assassinating key leaders, and paving the way for the Imperial Guard's main forces to launch a successful assault. However, the Crusade was not without its losses for the Ghosts. In the brutal combat on the planet Herador, they fought alongside the reincarnated Saint Sabbat herself, serving as her personal honor guard. This honor came at a significant cost, with the regiment suffering heavy casualties a testament to the relentless and unforgiving nature of warfare against the forces of chaos. The Tanith, from their very inception, were marked by tragedy. Their homeworld was sundered. From that moment, the regiment was set upon a path that would forever be shadowed by loss and the relentless pursuit of redemption. As their campaigns unfolded across the galaxy, from Vervenhive to the liberation of Gerion, the original Tanith, those sons and daughters of a lost world, dwindled. Each battle, each victory, came at a grievous cost. The cruel arithmetic of war reduced their numbers until none of the original Tanith remained. The regiment's identity evolved as it absorbed survivors from other war-torn Imperial worlds, such as Vergast and Belladon. These new recruits, though valiant and capable, represented the dilution of that original, singular spirit born from the forests of Tanith. The regiment continued under the same name, but it was, in essence, transformed. The Ghosts are distinguished primarily for their exceptional skills in stealth, reconnaissance, and guerrilla warfare. These guardsmen bring their home planet's shadowy forest's survival skills to the battlefield, giving them a distinct edge in various combat scenarios. Their expertise in stealth operations lies at the heart of the Tanith combat doctrine. The Ghosts, 
adept in the use of camo cloaks and moving silently through the most treacherous terrains, excel in ambushes and surprise attacks. Their ability to blend into their environment, whether a dense jungle or a rubble-strewn urban landscape, allows them to strike at the enemy from where they least expect. Reconnaissance is another cornerstone of their doctrine. Their scouts are capable of gathering critical intelligence behind enemy lines with minimal risk of detection. Their reconnaissance missions often lay the groundwork for more extensive operations. Providing vital information on enemy positions, movements and weaknesses. Light infantry tactics are the bread and butter of the regiment. Instead of relying on heavy armor or overwhelming firepower, the ghosts maneuver rapidly across the battlefield using their mobility and knowledge of the terrain to outflank and outmaneuver their adversaries. This approach is particularly practical in hit-and-run attacks, where they inflict maximum damage on the enemy before melting away into the shadows. In addition to their stealth and reconnaissance capabilities, the Tanith first and only are also renowned for their marksmanship. Their sharpshooters, epitomized by figures like Lane Larkin, can eliminate key targets at long range, sowing confusion and fear in the enemy ranks. This skill in precision shooting allows the ghosts to take out enemy officers, heavy weapon teams and other high-value targets with surgical efficiency. The integration of Vergastite and Belladon elements into the regiment, following the tragic loss of Tanith, has further enhanced their combat effectiveness. These new recruits brought with them urban and hive warfare expertise complementing the woodcraft and fieldcraft skills of the original Tanith troopers. This amalgamation of skills has made the Tanith first a more versatile fighting force, capable of adapting to a wide range of combat situations. The Tanith combat doctrine, though unconventional, has its risks. Their reliance on stealth and light infantry tactics makes them vulnerable in a prolonged, pitched battle especially against heavily armored foes or in situations where stealth is not feasible. Nevertheless, their ability to achieve objectives through ingenuity and surprise often compensates for these limitations. The destruction of their homeworld, Tanith, left them as a singular unit, a band of brothers forged in the fires of loss and survival. Gaunt, a figure of both respect and controversy stands at the helm of this regiment. His leadership, often unorthodox, has been instrumental in molding the ghosts into a cohesive and effective fighting force. Under Gaunt, the regiment's structure diverges from conventional Imperial Guard standards, reflecting the unique nature of the troops and the challenges they face. The heart of the Tanith First is its platoons, each a mix of diverse skills and backgrounds. Initially, these platoons were predominantly composed of Tanith natives. These soldiers brought with them the uncanny ability to navigate and survive in the most treacherous environments, a skill that became the cornerstone of the regiment's operations. As the ghosts faced attrition and the rigors of their campaign, new blood was infused into their ranks. Including soldiers from outside of Tanith, helped diversify the regiment's capabilities. This integration was not without its challenges. Cultural and operational differences led to friction, yet under Gaunt's guidance, these disparate groups slowly melded into a unified whole. Within this structure, two specialized groups stand out, the scouts and the snipers. The scouts are the eyes and ears of the regiment masters of reconnaissance and covert operations. The snipers, on the other hand, wield their rifles with deadly precision, capable of changing the course of a battle with a single shot. Their ranks include both the original Tanith sharpshooters and the skilled markswomen from Vergast. The Tanith's organization is fluid, adapting to the needs of their missions. Units are often restructured based on the specific requirements of their assignments, with soldiers selected for their particular skill sets. This flexibility has allowed the Ghosts to excel in a variety of operations, from sabotage and guerrilla warfare to holding the line in large-scale engagements. Despite their unconventional nature, the Ghosts have a robust command structure, with seasoned officers 
and non-commissioned officers providing leadership and maintaining discipline. These leaders are tacticians and caretakers, understanding the importance of morale and camaraderie in a unit that has faced so much loss. Gaunt's leadership of the Tanith, colloquially known as Gaunt's Ghosts, is a saga woven with the threads of sacrifice, determination, and an unbreakable bond with his troops. When tasked with the founding of the Tanith regiments, Gaunt's decision to evacuate the planet during its destruction saved the lives of those who would form the core of the first and only. In that moment of crisis, Gaunt displayed a rare blend of tactical acumen and compassionate leadership, traits that would define his command. Under Gaunt's stewardship, the ghosts evolved from a ragtag band of survivors into a formidable light infantry force, specializing in reconnaissance, guerrilla tactics, and stealth operations. Gaunt's leadership style was unorthodox, often clashing with the rigid structures of the Astra Militarum. He was a leader who walked amongst his troops, sharing in their hardships, listening to their stories, and, when necessary, disciplining them with a firm but fair hand. He understood the value of each soldier under his command, recognizing their potential and nurturing their skills. His strategic prowess was evident in numerous campaigns where he led the ghosts to victories against seemingly insurmountable odds. His decisions, of course, were not without cost, and he often bore the weight of these choices with a solemn sense of duty. Gaunt was more than a commander. He was a guardian to these first and only. Yet Gaunt's career was not without controversy. His unconventional methods and the independent nature of the ghosts often put him at odds with the higher echelons of the Astra Militarum and the Imperium's political machinery. His steadfast commitment to his regiment often led to difficult choices. Choices that would test his loyalty to the Imperium and his duty to his soldiers. As we draw the curtains on our exploration of the illustrious Tanith first and only, let us reflect on the indelible mark they have left upon the storied history of the Imperium. Under the sagacious leadership of Gaunt, the ghosts transformed from a dispossessed band of warriors into a force that epitomizes the finest qualities of the Astra Militarum. Their tale is one of tragedy and triumph, a saga where the ghosts of their past continually shadow their present, yet never dim their resolve. Through the dense forests of Blackshard to the besieged hive city of Vervenhive, from the toxic skies of Fantine to the frozen hell of Jago, the ghosts have faced the horrors of the galaxy and emerged victorious. Their combat doctrine, marked by stealth, precision, and an almost preternatural understanding of the battlefield, has turned the tide of many engagements that would have otherwise spelled doom for the Imperium's forces. Yet, it is not their martial prowess alone that sets them apart. The Tanith first and only embody a rare humanity amidst the often cold and calculating machinery of the Imperium's war machine. They fight not for personal glory, nor out of blind obedience, but for each other, for the memory of their lost home, and the future of humanity they fiercely protect. In closing, the saga of the Tanith first and only stands as a shining example in the annals of Imperial history a reminder that even in the darkest of times, the human spirit can endure and prevail. Though born from loss and sorrow, the ghosts of Tanith have written a legacy that will echo through the ages, a testament to the enduring strength and bravery of those who defend the Imperium of Man. Thank you for joining me in honoring the memory and valor of the Tanith first and only. May their tales of heroism and sacrifice continue to inspire us all. For Tanith, for the Emperor,